Hey everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. So to begin with, uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who obviously entered the poll. I think I said this yesterday. Um, the FPS slash Haven project was definitely a winner. I think it finished on 48%. So that means nearly half of you voted to have this series continue a little bit longer. Um, I've kind of been sort of deciding what I want to add in. Um, and I thought the best next step at the moment was to maybe get some AI in the game. Now, there's lots of different ways you can do this. Um, some of you will be like, oh, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? Um, but we're going to keep things simple for our first AI. Um, and, and the great thing is this will actually work for the Resident Evil series and for the Haven Project series. Because we're just going to add in some zombies. It's very simple to do. We don't have to do anything too complicated or advanced. Um, you can do this with just in within the blueprint for the zombie, or you could even do this um, through the uh, through doing a um, blackboard. Um, but I use blackboards for more complicated AI, AI like um, actual people kind of moving around, like like you know actual people you would invite, like that would would have to decide to shoot you, hide behind cover, that sort of thing. So we're going to cover that later on down the line when we need things like that. Um, but for now, we're just going to set up a zombie that kind of sits around until the player kind of comes into view. It might roam around the map a little bit, but mainly when it sees the character, we want it to go to the character and attack. We also want to be able to shoot that zombie and kill it. So we're going to be looking at doing that side of things for now. Um, but for this episode, we're just going to set up the zombie AI. Uh, I'm going to keep everything within our blueprint our third person blueprint here um, going to blueprints now we've got all of our player here so if I go back into the third person I'm gonna set up a new folder and we'll just call this uh, zombie um, we'll just call it zombies okay so that we know if we go into here we have all our zombies and we can drag those out into the world and all that sort of good stuff what we want to do is we want to set up a new character we'll call this uh, zombie master the reason I'm calling this master is because there might be some things you want to change. You might want different models. But if we create a master BP, we can do all the code within there and then just create a child and change its skins and, and it will all do the same sort of thing, right? That's the kind of idea behind it. It's good practice if you want multiple different characters all doing the same thing, but they just have different skins, okay? Or different weapons, you know, all that sort of stuff. So uh, let's open it up. We uh, should be met with the basics of what we need. So let's, let's just give it a chance to load up. There it is. We've got our capsule. We've got our character movement and all that sort of stuff. We're just going to use a um, our uh, Quinn for now. Uh, or we can use Manny. It really doesn't make much difference. But let's just keep everything the same for now. Uh, drag her down so she sits kind of at, I, I would say, probably minus minus 90 and we also want to rotate her so that she's no not that way we want to rotate her sorry uh to be uh, also probably minus 90 there we go so it's facing the arrow right and it sits within the capsule component compile that and we have our character uh, and that's all we need to do for today within here at the moment what we want to do is we want to open up our drawer again and we want to create um an where is it? Um, where am I looking? Here. We want an animation blueprint. So uh, we're going to obviously be using the same skeleton for the for the moment. Um, the reason we use the same skeleton is because we can then set all of our animations to the same skeleton. And then that way, any models we bring in down the line and things like that will all just hook up straight to this. Um, and it should all work fluently as long as all the animations are all set up correctly. So we'll call this zombie... Anim BP, and we can open that up. There we go, brilliant. And we'll set up a new state machine. Now, zombies, as I said, are very, very simple in the sense that we only need to really make them attack and walk around. It's as simple as that, and obviously die eventually. Um, so we'll call this locomotion as always. We can open it up. And pretty much the only thing we need in here is um, idle 
uh, we need idle slash walk. Uh, now, if you want your zombies to be a little bit more complex in the sense that they can go into prone, um, you, we can set that up as well. Um, I didn't name that right, did I know? Let's call this um, idle slash walk. Because we always want them to be able to walk around uh, and stand still, etc. So now that's set up, that should be good to go uh, once we've got our actual... Um, animation space setup so let's go into animation we only need a one dimensional for the zombies as well because again they're only going to really walk around you could sprint them if you want to but i always think zombies that sprint i i don't know it, it's a it's a debate for another day i guess but um let's just call this um zombie idle walk uh, underscore blend space one dimension so I've already imported a few different zombie animations. There's a bunch on Mixamo, but I'm not a big fan of Mixamo animations, as you've probably all seen in the past. Uh, so I have got a couple of zombie packs uh, in here. Um, we'll go with this one. We'll just find the, the best animation. I, again, I only need an idle and a walk animation for now. So let's have a look. Oh, we don't need that. So let's delete that out first off because that will then allow us to retarget our, all of our animations that we need. Force those deletes. And it might take a few seconds, but we'll come back after it's done. Okay, so now that's been deleted out, we can go into our animations. We want in-place animations for this. Um, and let's just find a good animation. Let's try this. Uh, no, we don't stand idle. We just want a normal idle, right? So let's see what we've got. I'm just going to put in idle. <clears throat> um, let's try this one. We'll retarget again to the female protagonist. So click OK. Um, that looks kind of creepy. I like that. Um, so let's go. Um, let's go and find ourselves a walk animation now. So just type in like walk. See what comes up. Uh, walk forward loop. Let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> Again, all to the female protagonist or whatever one you're using. That looks pretty good. I like that. <clears throat> okay, we can use both of those pretty nicely. Uh, the next thing we want to do now is go back into our content. Go back to where we kept all of our um, zombie stuff. And we want to open up our walk blend space. And all we need to do is set how fast we want them to walk. Now, I'm going to say probably 150 would be good. We can always change this figure, obviously, and update the speed within the third in the Zombie Master BP. But um, for now, we'll just we'll just set to 150. Uh, let's go for the idle. So the idle goes to the very left. Now, we have obviously already covered all this, but I'm just going to do it again just for anyone who's just looking at this tutorial. So if we hold Shift, uh, no control, and we move up and down, we can see that... They're standing, they're idling, they're looking around, and when they start to walk, they will begin to walk. Uh, let's set smoothing time to about one second. It gives it a chance to, to better um, move into this animation. Um, so we'll save that and close it down. We don't need it open at the moment. We can open our idle walk, and we can plug in that new, uh, wherever it is, zombie, it should be at the bottom, there we go, zombie walk, and plug that in. There we go. Lovely stuff. Uh, right click and promote this to a variable. Um, obviously it's called speed. Compile. And that's all everything done. Now what we need to do is go to the event graph. And we need to uh, do all of this. So let's cast. Now we want to. Oh, no, 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 no. Pull off from this. Cast to zombie master. And plug that in. Like so. We want to get forward, um, let's get the forward vector of the mesh maybe. I can't, I can't quite remember how to do this bit. <laughs> That's embarrassing, isn't it? Uh, compile, let's open up our third person one so I can remember what we're doing. When in doubt, go back and look at stuff you've done previously and how it's all set up. <laughs> That's all I can say. If, if you're ever you're stumped, just go back and look at something you've already done before. I've opened up the wrong thing here. Uh, no, I didn't. Oh gosh, what is wrong with me? Open this up. Um, get our mesh, 
character, get the get that, we'll open up our Manny because it's all done in the Manny BP, go to the event graph and find where we sort out our speed. So we want to get our movement component from our third person character and get velocity uh, and then we want to get the vector length. That's how we. That's how you do it, right? You don't have to set vector as a speed, but it, it can be handy, I guess. So we don't need the mesh. What we need to do is get um, our character movement and get our character's velocity. Get velocity. Oh, get velocity. Like so. Vector length. Vector. Maybe it's not a get, vector length, x, y, there we go. Okay, uh, and then we want to just set this speed, like so, and plug it in. And that will cover the speed of our zombie, like so. A lot simpler when I've actually researched what I'm gonna do, right? <laughs> Kabal, done. Uh, so that will always set our speed now, so the zombie actually will sit in its a idle form until we tell it to go somewhere. So come back to our zombie master, click on the mesh, uh, and we want to set that zombie and MVP like so. And it's already idling, right? And we can drag that out and it will sit there idling um, until we tell it to do something. So let's grab a character. Um, not that one, sorry, I went on the wrong one. Third person, zombies. And uh, we can just drag this out. now. When we click play, it won't do anything, of course, because we haven't told it to do anything. But it will sit there, just idling and looking around all creepily. Um, so yeah, brilliant. That's um, that's the zombie uh, essence kind of setup, and it was like what ten minutes to do that, and a lot of that was me fumbling around. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now what we want to do is we want to get everything ready so we can start telling it to do stuff in the next episode. And one of the things we will need is a nav mesh nav mesh bands volume okay drag it into the world it'll sit there and you can set this as big or as little as you want so let's you'll see the effects in a moment of this but make it as big as your level uh you can have it so that it's as big as as you want as well uh for anyone who's played day z in the past originally they didn't have nav meshes set up on buildings so it meant that when zombies came to stairs, there was no collision and they would just walk through the stairs. Uh, so anyone that stood upstairs in a building was absolutely perfectly safe. Um, so it's things like that, that things like this, like this nav mesh bands that will allow our zombie to kind of go up things as and when. So they can go upstairs and things like that. So this ramp will not be an issue for our zombie. If it was to chase us and we ran up here, it would also chase us up here. It would find a path using our nav mesh that it can get to where we are. Okay, so now that's set up, that's kind of all the setup done. Um, I think I'm going to break this up into more easier bite-sized tutorials. So that was kind of a little kind of look into how to set up a, um, a, a new locomotion. I know I've done it in the Resident Evil stuff and all the other things I've been doing, but this is obviously in our Haven project now, so that's how you kind of set up a basic locomotion and a brand new character. Now, again, if I was to right click on here and click create a child, I could call this a zombie doctor, right, BP, and then you could do another one, right, and call this um, military zombie, right, and then every one of these I drag out. Now, bear in mind, if I open this up, <clears throat> if I open this up, there is no code in here whatsoever as well. Now I know there's none in our other one, um, but as you can see, it parents everything, right? So whatever happens in our main, it sets it through to an ac uh, execute that executes on this as well, everything that is in that will be in here, okay? That's kind of uh, a quick understanding of that. <clears throat> So whatever we do in here now, uh, in this one here now, will replicate to these two. Um, that's not multiplayer, so don't expect that to now be like, oh, it's replicated. It's not replicated in the sense of a multiplayer game. It's replicated in the sense that of a single player game, where whatever we drag out from here now, there's our zombie one, there's our military one here. Okay, if I click play again, 
they will all start idling exactly the same as their parent class okay um, and the great thing about this as well is if you want to replicate um, like things like death and getting shot it will all go straight through that master BP uh, so it will work we can always call the master BP instead of calling every individual BP now right so um, someone actually asked me on Facebook about um, replicating a chair sit down in a multiplayer game now that is exactly how I would do it right so I would do everything within that master BP to enable all these zombies to sit down in chairs right you wouldn't do it individually that's where you kind of hit problems because you'd have to make 10 different calls 20 different calls for every type of zombie I make to the same chair whereas you could just do it once with one master VP and send that to the chair and it will all replicate down so they can all do it yeah now of course um, at the moment I can't shoot these bad boys there's no hit markers or anything like that. I didn't do anything but we will cover that now in this this sort of uh, extra series so that's how you set everything up ready to go for zombies the next thing what we'll be doing in tomorrow's episode is we'll go into our event graph and we will create a just a very basic roam around the map so we'll we'll set that up tomorrow uh, and then we'll, we'll from there we'll set up um, them seeing the player and chasing the player uh, and then from there we'll add damage for the player and for the zombies so it's gonna be about two three maybe four episodes just building in our first AI character this is great you'll be able to replicate this as well for any little character uh, or any basic enemies that you have in your game that just sort of roam around and attack the player on site. Um, as I said, we will do maybe a separate series where I look at doing some sort of proper enemy AI where they have guns and they can shoot the player back or make decisions like open doors or, um, you know, all that sort of good stuff. Um, but for now, we're just doing basic, basic enemies to, to introduce you to AI. Once we get there, we'll do some more extra, more in-depth, advanced stuff. Uh, but I've got it all planned out for the Haven Project. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do at least another sort of four, five, six episodes in the for now. I also still want to do the wall run. I know someone's requested a wall run. I'm just trying to find animations for that. It is on the list. I'm just looking for animations. As soon as we've got animations, I will be covering that tutorial for you. Um, I already know how to do it. I just need those animations. Um, but if anyone has any animations for war running, please send them my way and I can do the tutorial. But um, anyway, thank you so much guys for watching. I'm waffling on now. There was no need for it. Um, but thank you so much. Like, comment. Uh, leave a little comment with any, sub, uh, any subscriber requests you've got. And of course, hit that sub button. It's free to do. It helps the channel out a lot. And um, you can always change your mind down the line. But thank you so much, guys. I hope this has been useful. Take care. Bye-bye.